put my chat window up. Hey, welcome everyone to our second ENA Together virtual town hall. I want to first say thank you for joining us. During this hour, I am plan to give you some key updates on what is going on with the ENA, but more importantly, I want to hear from you <coughs> during this town hall and after it as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, it is truly important for me um, to know that um, ENA is here um, to provide you with the tools and resources that you need. So if there's something that you need, please reach out and let us know so that way we can support you during this time. Speaking with a board of directors, um, they're here to help support you as well. So the group continues to hold weekly calls focused on what our members need and how the association can best support you. Today we have several of the board members that are on the call joining us today for this town hall. So thank you for being here. Typically, the board of directors makes visits to their states throughout the years to touch base with you at the local level. Obviously, with COVID-19 going on, we're not able to travel. However, the board is committed to being connected with you, and so they're doing the virtual meetings with the states and their regions. So if there's anything that your board of directors can do for you, please reach out to them with your questions, comments, and suggestions. So a couple of housekeeping items. Obviously, we probably all know about the virtual meetings drills by now, right? Things move fast, but we want to hear from you as many people as possible. So I'm going to share a couple few updates with you, and then we'll turn it over, we'll ask some questions and get some stories from you as well. So this is your time. So please add your questions, comments into the Q&A tab, and we'll try to get to many of them as possible before this hour is up. And I'm seeing some comments about our slides are a little blurry, but so we're gonna work on that, trying to see what we can do may have something to do with the internet connection, you know, technology, but uh, we'll get through this. It's all together. So um, we are recording this session, so you can revisit this as well. So if you missed something through this. Well, I have to tell you, a, a lot sure has happened um, since our last town hall meeting, right? We celebrated Nurses Week. We celebrated EMS Week. No matter what, those are definitely not the same weeks that we typically have had, right? We, I'm sure none of us had those big celebrations um, that uh, we normally would have at our institutions. Hopefully though, that you did see many public expressions of the, your appreciation and support for the nurses over the most recent weeks. Who knew these celebrations were gonna be so different and so much more important this year? I know that I've said this before, but I want you to hear it from me again. I'm so proud of the dedication and commitment you all have for our profession. I could not be prouder to be a nurse, and even more importantly, an emergency nurse. I'm also thrilled to be part of ENA, as we recently reached a major milestone for our association. We hit 50,000 members. This was a goal of us, you know, for many of us for a long time to hit 50,000 members for our 50th um, year anniversary, and we hit it. So we've seen a huge surge in membership since the start of the year, as ED nurses have turned to us for clinical resources and various benefits um, that, to assist them during this pandemic. So welcome to our newest members and to all of you who have helped grow our membership um, to become the premier organization for emergency nurses. Thank you and welcome again to all of our new members. So it is your dedication and commitment and driving forces behind the ENA Foundation's effort to support those that are impacted personally and professionally by this public health crisis. The ENA's Foundation's COVID-19 Relief Fund has distributed 270 grants to members who have applied since the program launched just about a month ago. 
The foundation is proud to have to be able to offer a little help to our members who have lost shifts and hours, who are supporting loved ones, or are simply dealing with financial difficulties caused by this challenging times. I know that there's a lot of places that nurses are being furloughed or their hours are being cut. And this is just a little way that we can help support our members on the front lines. I do wanna take a minute because I did see, we did see a comment that came in about some staff that had been furloughed and that they're not feeling that appreciation like the, those members that are actually working in the EDs. I just want you to know that ENA is here to help support you. And this is just another way with a foundation grant, hopefully that this will help you in those difficult times right now. No matter if we're working directly in the, EN, or in the EDs or you know, if some of our hours got cut or furloughed, I just want you to know that you are important and we appreciate everything that you do and helping support our profession. The foundation does continue to work hard to build up the fund through donations and the sales of a few products. So I'm sure that you've spotted on our social media, the pop sockets, that they're giving 100% of sales back to purchase an ENA mask or other cool items in our Threadless shop are a couple of ways to help. So visit ena.org slash together and check out the shop for a cause section to learn more. And these links that I talk about will be in our chat group as well. So you can uh, look at the chat windows and copy those links down. So as I mentioned, ENAs continues to do what we can to build our awareness around the foundation's efforts and encourage donations by visiting enatogether.org. One truly amazing way we're able to spread that word was a recent release of the Resilient music video. Talented Broadway performers and everyday nurses and physicians came together on this powerful song. It is a collaboration ENA is proud to have been a part of. If you haven't seen it, or if you want to see it again, you're going to see it here again. Um, so we're about to watch it. Um, I can tell you I've watched it a thousand times. I watch it every day. Um, and But uh, we're going to try to play it over Zoom here. It may be a little choppy, but we'll send the link here in the chat window as well um, to be able to see it. So um, here's the resilient video. So we're trying to work on the sound there. I know the sound's not coming through for some reason. It did during our practice, but... Uh... We are working on that. So I think we'll pause the video and we'll restart it here. Just to, I think it's a share issue. So we'll come back to that in one moment. Hey Dave. Hey Jay. Cancel my trip to New York. We're postponing the reading. I know. But you know that song Resilient that we wrote for the show? I think that could be an incredible inspirational ballad for the COVID-19 situation. You are right. Let's call Stephen DeAngelis. He could find us an incredible cast of Broadway talent, and I think I could find us some singing healthcare workers. Okay, I'm gonna get in touch with Broadway Cares, and we'll look up the American College of Emergency Physicians and the Emergency Nurses Association. And we can make a video. Do you know how to do that? No. When the battle swords are drawn And it feels like the final dawn The key is to be resilient When all options seem perverse Resilient Never slow 
Awesome. Well, I hope that uh, you guys uh, appreciate that. It is a little choppy over the Zoom. Um, so um, please make sure you. Hey, hey Jay. Uh, just take it, you know, like I like the video so much I want to keep playing because it knows me, right? So um, just make sure you go out and you take a look at that uh, video. You know, if you're having a bad day, honestly, you know, take a look at that video. Um, you can't help but uh, to change your mood, at least while you're watching that uh, video. Um, and, you know, if you actually watch uh, some of the singers, like the, the guy that starts off, he's actually in his closet singing um, and stuff. I mean, I, I just think it's funny. So I think it's great. So, um, so anyway, um, I want to open the floor up for a few minutes um, for you to share some of your reflections on this videos, what you've been experiencing, the crisis has, um, as the crisis has evolved, um, what are those, those kind of challenges, and what are those key uh, highlights that have come out of it? What are those positive things that you've seen so far? So Mike, while we wait for a few questions to come in, uh, there was one question that, um, and, and it's very valid, everything that's been going on, uh, wondering uh, how ENA is honoring ER nurses who have been victims of COVID-19 and have survived. Um, so if you want to just briefly address that. So yeah, so I can tell you that um, when we do hear about a member that has, has been impacted directly with covid um, 19, um, then, you know, I'm reaching out personally to them um, when we know those informations. So if you know somebody that has happened, um, you know, feel free to, to reach out um, to myself or up to the office or to a member of your board of directors. And um, that way we can um, contact with them um, to, to check in with them um, and see how they're doing. And also, Ed, Mike, uh, we'll talk a little bit about how people can share some stories um, with us because we're obviously interested in what people have to, uh, what's happening locally and stories that they're hearing from their colleagues and their peers and fellow members. So uh, we'll share a little bit more about how people can get those stories to us uh, later in the hour. Uh, let me see what other questions we might have here. We'll give another second here, let people uh, submit. I think we've got an, one more coming in here, one second. And I see a comment from Aaron about uh, how we treat pulmonary disease and, you know, from a vent, um, vent status and stuff. Um, yeah, I think, uh, you know, one of the things that we're definitely going to be learning from this, right, is different places on how they've done different things and, you know, um, and how we treat these patients, right? So. I mean, you know, EDs that are proning in the ED, right? That was never ever heard of really in the ED world. And there's even some EMS systems that are proning patients um, that are coming in. So I think it, it'll definitely be an interesting time to see, you know, how our practice changes um, in the coming months and years. Like, is there anything about you in particular that you've seen change, um, you know, within your staff or just you personally as you've encountered this for the last three, four months? Well, you know, so we kind of joke about is that we actually figured out a way to do throughput um, initially, right? So, um, I mean, kind of as we were going through the pandemic, I mean, how many borders did we have in our EDs, right? Like pretty much none of us had borders because the hospital was actually able to figure out some throughput issues, which really kind of highlights the fact that throughput is really is a hospital issue, right? And not an ED issue, which we all know um, in the EDs, but it really helps he heighten that awareness to the hospital staff. So. Um, you know, so it's kind of one of those things. Unfortunately, as soon as we started opening back up here for um, elective surgeries, we actually, um, the, the second day, we actually had 12 borders. So I have a, my, I have 35 bed ED, and all of a sudden I had 12 borders that second, you know, the day that we opened up for, uh, for uh, elective surgery. So unfortunately, my borders are back. But again, it's the conversation that's happening with administration, um, you know, that's really is the key parts around hospital throughput and, and uh, ED boarding and stuff. So, um, and I see a comment around um, sepsis and the sepsis initiatives, right? And so I think this is actually gonna be a key one really is because we know that the CMS guidelines around sepsis care um, and looking at mortality rate right, as well. Well, obviously with COVID-19, you know, a lot of our mortality rates have gone way up because of that. Well, if they also have a diagnosis of sepsis, how's that gonna um, work on reimbursements to organizations and hospitals. So I think that's an interesting uh, thing that uh, we're, we're gonna have to track and trend and see what happens with that. So Mike, one other thing that, uh, a comment, and this is a, a bit of a good uh, transition into our next section, but um, 
Tamika mentions the appreciation of patients uh, toward emerged care providers has been humbling. Her concern is the impact of the psychological aspects, um, you know, on the nurses that who who have been on the front line. Um, you know, certainly it's something that you, you brought up in uh, in our first town hall meeting. Something we're going to talk about a little bit a little bit here. Would, would you like to just kind of move into that mental health and well being section? Yeah. So let's go to the next section here because it is definitely one of the things that I I want to focus on. Um, you know, that mental health and well being um, of us that have been facing this in the front lines is definitely extremely important to me. So, um, and I'm totally gonna go off script here, um, you know, because that's what I do, right? But um, is the fact of, you know, when you look at it from a, a disaster perspective, you know, at a time of a disaster, you have that time of impact. And you can kind of map out that psychological impact after that time of impact. Well, one of the things with COVID-19, obviously, is that we don't have a time of impact, right? This is a continual disaster um, process for us to face. And so what is that? mental health and well-being, and how do we take care of ourselves kind of throughout this process. Um, and so obviously as emergency nurses, you know, we face um, seeing things that the general public will never see our, in our day-to-day -day operations, right, um, prior to COVID. Um, but now we're, we're seeing the, you know, the heartbreak of a loved one that comes into the emergency department. Obviously hospitals are, are locked down essentially so that the visitors aren't coming in. Um, so we see that fear and that sadness in, in the eyes of the patient who comes to us kind of from a general complaint, but then told that their workup, you know, they probably have cancer or doesn't look good, right? We know that fear in our patient's eyes after they have a life altering event. Um, these are the things that the general public don't see day to day, right? But unfortunately, that, this is what we see day to day. COVID-19 has only, you know, added a new dimension to this, right? Previously, we had family members that were there to help support the patients, but now we don't have the family members that are there because of our hospitals on lockdown with visitors policies. So we see the fact that, you know, a level one may be there with them initially, but then they're escorted out of the ED. And yet they know that may be the last time that they see their loved one. So and we have seen that hard heartache knowing that someone is dying, yet their family is not able to say goodbye to them. Their work we do is hard and it takes an emotional toll on us no matter how long you've worked in emergency care settings. Typically, uh, most of us have places where we can decompress mentally, and or physically, you know, like I used to always say that, uh, you know, I, I would work out in the morning. I worked out at 5 a.m. in the morning because it was my outlet. It was one way that mentally and physically that I could stay healthy. Obviously, with gyms being closed, I'm not able to do that. So obviously, since COVID-19 has shut down a lot of our communities, what are those outlets that people are using to stay safe during this time of increased stress? Um, and what are you turning to to stay healthy yourself? So I'm totally thrilled that ENA is partnered with the American Nurses Foundation, ANA, APNA, and AACN on the Wellbeing Initiative. This is to offer resources that support the mental health and resilience of nurses. One aspect that ENA has taken the lead on is Nurses Together, connecting through conversations. It's a free resource that provides you the opportunity to take an hour um, virtually to connect with some of your nursing peers in a judgment-free zone, to talk, to chat, um, to let people know what's going on. This time is for you to share your thoughts, seek support, and simply focus on how you're coping with this very, very challenging times. So I'll let you know that uh, you can sign up by going to a link here and that will be posted um, and uh, the uh, chat box thing. Uh, but the link is signupgenius.com slash org slash nurse together. Um, and if you haven't signed up for one, I strongly suggest you do them. I can tell you I've helped moderate um, several of them now. It's a great opportunity for you to connect with other nurses across the country. Um, it's just another great way for us to connect. So, um, so again, there's several um, kind of offerings as far as time-wise for you to be able to do it. And so again, just go to the link and we'll post the link in our chat box again for you to do. So, so let me also remind you about a couple other resources that ENA has for you. Um, so if you visit the ENA COVID-19 resource page, um, which has updated links to self-care information, um, and so you'll see those links there for you. Um, this page also includes related ENA topic briefs in our stress fatigue and burnout course. Um, so make sure that you're checking out these and monitor how you're coping with this pandemic. I know a lot of states are starting to open back up so you're, we're, we can uh, kind of let our guard down a little bit and relax a little bit more. 
but uh, just please during this time, please make sure that you're taking care of yourself. So I would love to hear, you know, kind of how you're taking care of yourself, how, how you're managing um, yourself, and then also within your care settings where you work at, how you're supporting each other. So we're gonna um, see if there's kind of any comments around that session. So I, this is um, sort of it, sort of in the vein of um, you know public interaction or you know sort of dealing with the stress of of things like wearing a mask. So the comment in question was, you know, finding that uh, you know while I'm wearing a mask out and about, which is more about protecting um, others from me. Oftentimes you're getting the question from patients or other people, you know, have you had contact with COVID-19 patients and the answer is always going to be yes. You know, since they don't have the ability to self-isolate because of the job, you know, she's just wondering what are some thoughts on how do you negotiate that, that conversation with people who are clearly concerned about where you have been, but you're doing what you're supposed to as part of your job and also, um, you know, you're just trying to do your best to protect others from what, what you're going, you know, what you may have been exposed to. Yeah, I mean, and it's such a hard thing, right? I mean, because obviously we face our, our uh, you know, and our care settings that, you know, yes, we come in potential contact with, with COVID-19 patients. So what are we going to do? I mean, we still have to go out. We still have to, you know, go grocery shopping and get, the, get our supplies and stuff. Um, you know, so it's always a hard balance. I know um, where I'm at, our gyms are potentially opening next week, which I'm super excited. However, with the regulations, because of the fact that I potentially come in contact with COVID-19 patients, I'm not allowed to go to the gym for 14 days after my initial contact. Well, I don't have an initial contact, right? Because my contact keeps going because of my care settings. So unfortunately, you know, that means that I'm still not gonna be able to go to the gym and work out. Um, so I have to be able to do something on my own, um, you know, to maintain my own physical health. So, you know, is it, uh, you know, just taking a bike ride with my boys um, or when their tire pops on our bike ride, I get a run with their bike as they try to ride my bike, you know, it's these, these kind of things that, uh, you know, we have to try to ex experience some outlets, um, for us. So, um, sort of what you mentioned, Mike, about being able to get out and about and be active, uh, you know, Tressa mentioned that, you know, she's doing the stairs in her building with the gym clothes and, um, is trying to unplug uh, for an hour a day and, you know, is actually putting it into her calendar to make sure she's getting that time to, to get away. I imagine that, you know, you've had to, to, you know, in addition to what you're doing at work, your ENA responsibilities have put a lot of pressure and crunch on your time. Anything that you're doing to make sure you're getting that family time or some distance away from the topic of the day? Yeah, so I'll tell you, you know, because kind of my day-to-day -day operations, right? So, Obviously, I, I manage an emergency department, so you know I have long hours throughout the week. You know I have Saturday and Sunday typically off these days um, because we've kind of come to our new norm, which is great. However, also that Saturday and Sunday um, is school time for, for the boys essentially. So we get to play schoolwork. I get to play teacher, you know, on, on the weekends, and we do that. But then we also try to build in just downtime with the family. So is it watching a movie? Is it going outside doing something physical? Um, so I love to work out in the yard. So I love the garden. I love, you know, so mowing my yard, granted my yard's not big. It only takes me about 20 minutes, but that's 20 minutes of just my alone time that nobody needs anything from me. Um, and so um, my yard gets mowed a couple times a week right now. Um, so um, that's just a way that I can build in some kind of my alone time, decompressed time for myself. Um, and actually I'll tell you, so um, the resilient video, like at night, like if I've had a bad day, a hard day, Again, I just watch it again. Um, and then like I watch that video and then I shut off all my electronics. So um, just to be able to di disconnect from everything, so. A couple other comments that were mentioned in terms of sort of self care. Um, Andy mentions the, uh, loves the, the Mood Fit app. So I don't know if, um, if anybody's familiar with that, but that was one suggestion. And then uh, uh, Gordon Gillespie, one of our, our board members, um, is scheduling lunch with his wife as an opportunity to give them both a little bit of a mental health break, um, but also obviously, you know, connecting, uh, connecting with one another as well. Great. Yeah, and, and I've seen uh, several states have done um, some like the virtual happy hours um, with their members as well to connect up. Um, just again, it's a way to be able to have that sense of community and connection because um, I think that's what we all, we all miss, right? We all miss that, uh, that connection um, point in time. So I think we've got one more comment. Let me check.
Well, so yeah, if you guys have other ideas and stuff, uh, you know, feel free to continue, you know, type in into the chat group and uh, we'll have time kind of throughout uh, to touch base with them. So <clears throat> um, let's go on to the next section um, of this um, update. And that is going to be talking about some events. So obviously um, a big topic for us. So I'm sure that we'll have uh, plenty of questions um, kind of through this as well. So two weeks ago, I had the pleasure of hearing from our state and chapter um, leaders. I can tell you with no surprise, the biggest question was all around ENA's annual conference, right? As we know, the vision of EN 2020 in Las Vegas and the reality of what is possible have been on the minds of many. I can tell you my dream was over 5,000 emergency nurses that I wanted there um, coming from all over the world um, just to have an amazing conference, um, you know, and celebrate together ENA's 50th anniversary. Unfortunately, that massive gathering is going to have to wait, right? We're not going to be able to have a, a um, gathering of over 5,000 members. So today I'm excited to announce that EN20X, that's a virtual experience will take place September 9th through the 11th and will serve as our annual conference this year. This isn't gonna be your everyday virtual meeting. Expect an engaging interactive emergency nursing education event complete with a virtual exhibit hall. That's right, we're gonna even have an exhibit hall that's completely virtual. You can still engage with your vendors and get the product information that you need. So this isn't a Zoom meeting. I've checked, I can tell you, I've checked out the, um, the platform and I can see the concept how EN20X is going to happen. And I can say it will be an amazing experience. So yes, my vision of EN20 has had to change, um, but I can tell you I'm so excited now for EN20X. It's going to be engaging and robust, robust event that you want to be a part of. And you can do it anywhere, virtually. So it's gonna be completely amazing. I, I just have to say, like, I'll, I have to tell you, when we initially started talking about a virtual conference, I was like, oh man, you know, because you think about, you know, your Zoom, but I can tell you, this looks amazing. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. This is going to be a member exclusive event that is going to be happening again, September 9th through the 11th. And the cost is $100 to attend. So registration is going to open up on June 3rd. And so you can expect additional information when everything launches next week. Obviously, with a pivot to EN20X, our amazing, amazing education team and conference education planning committee has had to change their directions. And so I just want to give them a special shout out to, to say thanks for all your amazing work that you're doing to ensure that our premier educational event of 2020 is going to be amazing. So, and on that note as well, a related note, last Thursday, the decision was made to make 2020's General Assembly a virtual event, which will be scheduled for September the 8th. More details are forthcoming still, but if you're interested in becoming a delegate for this year's General Assemblies, please contact your state presidents. If you already registered for EN20, you, you should have received an email today about this change to EN20X. So please make sure you look at that email. And again, more information will be coming about EN20X. Again, it's going to be an amazing experience. So please make sure that uh, you help push out the information to all your members um, and get everybody else to join in for this amazing experience for us. So, but there's still more to talk about. So who's looking to unwind a little bit? We all know it's hard to keep eating nurses from having fun. So I'm excited to announce that ENA will be hosting five virtual dance parties over the next few months. Starting June 12th, with the 1970s, each party will have a decade theme and other surprises to give everyone a chance to have a little fun with their peers around the country. So start digging in your closet or check with some of your friends and relatives and coworkers to get your style in 70s looks together before the party two weeks from tonight. More information is going to come out soon, so keep an eye on ENA social medias um, about how to join the party. Now, something else. So, with now more than ever, it is important to note the critical work that's being done by Richard and Rob, our ENA um, affairs team in Washington, D.C., to fight for ED nurses during this public health crisis. 
Although we can't all be at Capitol Hill together this year, it is imperative that our members still have the tools that they need to connect with their federal legislators this summer while they're home in their districts. So in July, the government relations team will be hosting a day off the Hill. It's gonna be a three hour virtual advocacy, education and training event on July 9th. Invites to register will go out soon to state leaders, GA chairs, and the 2019 Day on the Hill attendees. So please keep an eye on your email for additional details about um, and the invitations to come out soon to you. So let's take a few questions about some of these uh, um, events that uh, I've just kind of announced and let's see what uh, I can do to help alleviate some of the uh, anxiety um, around uh, some of these. So Mike, I think the main questions right now have been uh, about how the deposits work. You referenced it, why don't you repeat again uh, th about the email that went out earlier. Um, and there's a couple different options that people can, can find in there. Yeah, so, so if you had already registered or put your deposit down for, um, for conference, you should have received an email today that has information about EN20X um, and what's gonna happen with all that. Um, there's going to be more information that is coming out to all of our members later on today um, and on our social media platforms uh, as well about EN20X. And so that should help answer any questions that you have around um, that. Uh, there is a question about hotel reservations. Um, you can share a little yeah. bit about that. Yeah, so if you made your hotel reservations through um, your registration, those will be canceled because it's all part of a package and ENA will handle that with our vendors. Um, again, if you've already registered, you would have received an email that should have information about that for you. Um, and again, we'll be pushing out more information um, to everybody on this as well. And again, so um, I saw that there was a question. I, I try to look at the, the chat window, you know, as I talk, but sometimes, you know, so I saw a thing about uh, a Zoom type of meeting again. I can tell you that this is not a Zoom type of meeting. It is an interactive platform for you to engage with um, through it. It looks it looks pretty cool. Um, so, um, you know, obviously this is brand new for all of us, um, but I can tell you if I wasn't excited about this, we wouldn't be moving forward with this virtual platform from this educational offering for you guys. So it is gonna be truly an amazing experience. Like we have a question about student members and I know you'd be excited to let people know about that. Uh, for our student members? For, yes. for conference? For EN20X. Um, so I'm not really sure what, uh, um, if, if we're just talking about what it's gonna cost for them. It, I mean, if it's student member that's gonna be able to register for the conference, it's gonna be a $50 um, registration fee for them for the conference. And uh, so we, it, you had mentioned it earlier, why don't you repeat, um, going back to uh, day off the hill, uh, there's a question. So uh, can you re reiterate uh, wh who these invites will be going to since there will be a, a limit on who is part able to participate in that? Yeah, so the in invitations are going to go out to the state leaders um, with the GA chairs um, and then the 2019 day on attendees. Um, so if you registered for, so if you attended in 2019, Day in the Hill event, um, you should get that registration event as well. So we still unfortunately have to kind of limit the size um, of it, um, of the event that we're doing, but it's, it's still gonna be an, an amazing opportunity. And I saw that there's a question as far as like inductions with Academy and stuff. So all these details are still being worked out. So so don't worry, we're, all this is on our radar. We are still trying to figure all this out. Um, obviously there's a lot of moving parts to this. Um, and we'll get that information out to you guys just as soon as we can. I had one, let me find the one other question. Let me find that for you one second. And I saw that there was a question earlier about GA and what, what does that look like and stuff. So we, so the team is actively working on all that. So I can tell you that we are working with our lawyers, the parliamentarian, as well um, to make sure that obviously we're following our bylaws and what that looks like. So um, I know you guys all want all the information, all you want all the details. Um, trust me, you know, we want that as well, but we're working through that whole process and we'll get you that information just as soon as we can um, on that. But it will still be a very um, engaging general assembly 
um, for us to make sure that we're getting the business done for our association. And Mike, there was a question about presenters um, and those who you know were uh, working with the, the conference education planning committee. Uh, if you just want to touch on, you know, that was also a group that was was contacted or had some information that went out earlier. Um, yeah, so the speakers that we had already planned for EN20 did receive email notice um, earlier today about this change as well. And there are some changes around that. So if somebody um, was a speaker on that, um, they received notice um, with several more kind of follow up questions to them as well um, to see if they would be interested in still participating in um, EN20X. For us. All right, um, let me see a couple other questions here. Um, the majority of what you've, you know, a number of questions that have kind of tied into what you've said, you know, there's a lot of information that's still uh, being worked through. So there's a question about um, whether the states will be able to do certain things with fundraisers and um, virtual ex exhibitors. Um, and you know things related to GA about number of delegates and things of that nature. So there's a lot of information that's uh, still floating around right now um, that will be coming out in the, in the coming weeks. Um, and then um, let me see if there's um, this was a different um, different event, um, but uh, someone looking for information relating to cultural exchange trip for 2020. Yeah, so unfortunately, obviously, with, with the times of travel and everything being kind of canceled, um, right now, that is on hold. Yeah, let's see. Um, and then uh, Charlene mentioned that she uh, had pre-registered or she had uh, had a deposit um, and said she didn't get an informational email. Um, there's two waves of, of emails that are going out today. Uh, so that it will be something that uh, if you didn't get it as part of, uh, if you were somebody who put a deposit down, uh, there is another email that will be going out shortly uh, after this ends here. Uh, so people can uh, look up for that. If you still don't see anything, uh, you know, please feel free to reach out to, uh, to, to meetings, uh, meeting services, and they should be able to help figure out why you did not receive some information. Um, me, uh, meeting services at ENA.org. If you don't see an email, you haven't seen one or you don't see one later today, uh, we've got one other question here. Um, so the question is, you know, mentioned about uh, hotels being canceled if it was through our registration through ENA. Um, you know, if people have questions about um, if they went through and, and picked out their own hotel, um, house or Airbnb and airfare as well. Um, you know, that obviously if it sounds like something that if ENA didn't do it, uh, we would just be guiding them to go back to those sources, Mike. Right. Yeah. Again, and, and thanks, uh, Stephanie, for that uh, question slash clarification there. So, yeah. So the only hotel reservations that ENA is canceling is you book your hotel through us, right, um, during part of the registration process. If you booked a lodging um, on your own from an outside source, obviously ENA does not know. Um, that and so we would not be canceling any of your reservations. So you would need to follow up on how you made that reservation and look at your options as far as canceling that reservation on your own. And then uh, there's a question that's out there about a group option uh, for multiple people to be involved with the EN20X. Um, Mike, I don't know if you have anything additional on that right now. I think that's something that uh, probably is going to be looked at. Yeah, I don't. Um, so right now, I don't have any information as far as kind of doing a big group discount of kind of what that looks like. Um, I, can, I can tell you, though, that um, what we've also talked about with the EN20X is that it's not so we have it for those three days, but then there's also going to be additional educational offerings kind of throughout the year um, that we're also going to take some of the information from EN, that EN20 that we initially had planned for Vegas that we're gonna use some of those educational topics, again, to, to give you guys further educational offerings kind of throughout the year as well. All right, uh, I think we've got a couple more seconds here. Let's see if there's any other additional questions. I know there's a lot here, uh, one second. And so I just, so, in my message, you know, the voices are talking to me here, um, you know, from the staff. So, um, so there is no group option that's going to happen um, for groups um, because everybody's going to have to have their individual link. Essentially, and essentially, what happens when you go in 
it's kind of like that you're your individual person, right, into these conferences. And so you're going to have this whole kind of experience that you're going to be able to do and customize to you and your own learning and how you want to interact um, with a space. So obviously you guys can kind of get together and, and do it all in kind of a one room if you want to, but everybody's going to have to kind of have their own registration to be able to have that own experience and be able to um, capture those CEs um, off of those. So um, the other thing to note is that when you register for this, yes, we have it for those three days, but also you're going to have availability for that content for the following three months. So again, this isn't just a one-time um, you know, event on those three days. You're gonna have this content access for three months after this event as well, so for, for you. So again, that's a great, I mean, $100, you're gonna get all the educational offering for you, and then you have access to some of it, again, like I said, for after three months, even after that, so. And then, uh, Mike, I think one other thing we'll just add on to that, that the, um, you know, as the programming is still being sorted out, there will be a mix of live and recorded uh, programming during those three days. And as you mentioned, those, that information will uh, continue, the sessions will, be, will live for attendees for, for the three months afterward. Um, and then I, I guess there's the, uh, there is a question about uh, the number of CEs, um, and I, I believe that's still being sorted out. Yeah, so the number of CEs is still being sorted out as far as how much um, educational offerings that we can do. Obviously, with this shift um, and making this out, the Education Planning Committee has to completely redo um, kind of the uh, framework of what our conference looked like. So, I mean, thankfully, we had a great conference that was planned um, in Vegas, and now we just have to modify that um, to fit this framework that we're going to be doing virtually now. So. So the team is uh, is actively engaged in that and working on it, and uh, so more information will be able to come out for that. All right. So again, if you have, continue to have more questions, you know, feel free to to chat in um, your questions or comments um, there, and we'll try to get everybody's addressed um, as we move on. So. So let's move on here. So obviously, you know, what a year it's been, right? This definitely was a year to have highlighted the year of one's person's ability to make a difference. 2020 has already been that year, not even six months in, right? I've been honored to do a few dozen media interviews. I think that's more than a few dozen, honestly, but who's counting these days? Um, representing ENA, its members, and what's more, most important to all ED nurses. I am awe in awe of the great things that our members are being noticed for and what they're doing in their communities. I want to highlight three members who, while noticed for their individual actions, truly rep represent the spirit and commitment of emergency nurses. These three represent all of us in their work, passion, and dedication during a public health crisis that has put a bright light on our specialty. Helen Smithline in Massachusetts joined a team of researchers, engineers, and other healthcare professionals to design and create face shields that could fit over goggles and N95 masks. Ellen brought her 26 years of experience in the ED into the conversation to ensure that the shields could withstand a nurse's movement while continuing to protect them. Nicole Fedot in Michigan was featured as an emergency nurse spending long hours working with COVID patients, but without losing focus on the human side. Despite the hectic pace, she made sure to spend a couple of minutes to talk with those patients who were alone and were scared. Star Sherritt from Minnesota heard the call to action and left home to help in New York, which spiked as one of the worst hotspots in the nation earlier this year. Like many of our nurses around the country, she went toward the fire and brought her compassion and dedication to a place where it was needed most. These are just three of ENA's nearly 50,000 members, but they are a reflection of all of us. There are countless more stories out there and we'd love to hear about them. So I encourage you to share the stories from your states and communities with ENA. So if you hear about these stories, you know about these stories, you're personally involved with them, whatever the case may be, please send us a message through our Facebook or send an email to contact at ENA.org. If you put in the title, Nurses Stories in the subject line, that kind of helps separate, separates it out um, for us. 
but it's truly important that I would want to capture as many of these stories um, that we can during these times. So with that, I would like to open it up um, for any more additional questions um, that we have that have come in. So uh, Mike, the question was brought up and I think this is a, a, something that you can easily answer. You know, once more details uh, have been figured out for both GA and also for uh, Ian 20 x um, the suggestion was it'd be great to have another one of these webinars with you uh, moving forward. Uh, what, do you what do you say to that? Yeah, I'm totally open to doing these webinars. I think it's extremely important a way for us to be able to give you guys the information that you need and for you guys to have a chance to, to chat with me um, virtually to ask questions and concerns. Again, um, just know that your board of directors is here to help support you. So feel free to reach out to any members of the board of directors um, because again, we want to be here to make sure that you have the tools and resources. So um, there's nothing more than I love to having that connection with you all. Um, so I'm totally open and love the idea of doing more of these. So Mike, the next question uh, is about the 50th anniversary committee and whether they'll be posting information concerning their celebration plans, such as the, the video competition. Yeah, so um, all that information is still coming and we're still working again, like on how that whole process is going to work and how conference is going to be. But there is um, an updated information on the uh, ENA's 50th um, webpage as well. Um, so make sure that you're checking that out um, to get some more information. Uh, we have a question relating to uh, in case of emergency, which, uh, you know, everybody is excited uh, and wondering how that ties to the 50th anniversary celebration and whether, um, you know, we'll have an opportunity to, uh, to show that uh, or they'll be able to have an opportunity to show that uh, in the near future. Yeah, so obviously with, um, with the um, pandemic that has happened, obviously we could not have the initial launch of in case of emergency, which is what we wanted to have in May. Um, so that has been postponed into October 13th, um, which is going to be the premiere. Um, and then we will um, be working with the states to help get the, um, that this CD, whatever that is, how it gets out to the states. Um, so then that way you guys can hold local events um, at your state levels, chapter levels, or, um, or anything. Um, so I, I typoed you, Mike. It, it's October uh, 14th. I hit 13 October by 14th. mistake, so my apologies for that. So October 14th is when uh, we're going to do the premiere. Um, I can tell you that we've been in contact um, with, with a team on In Case of Emergency, and they have some amazing things in the works um, for that video. Um, it's just going to be absolutely amazing. So I look forward to the October 14th um, premiere of that. And as we have more information, we will make sure that you guys have that information as well. So Mike, there was another question about uh, Vegas and hotel reservations. Uh, maybe it's a good time to offer a reminder about uh, what our plans are relating to Vegas at this point. Yeah, so unfortunately we will not have any sort of live event in Vegas this year for EN20. So it will be a virtual ex um, event that we'll be doing. We will be doing some live broadcasting, a part of EN20X, um, but that, uh, we won't be having any sort of in-person meeting or anything in Vegas this year, unfortunately. Let's see, we've still got a few minutes for questions. Looking to see what else we have. Uh, there's another question relating to uh, states and their ability to show in case of emergency. Um, I think you touched on that a little bit, but maybe just reiterate uh, how that process will work, um, you know, in terms of what they'll have access to after the premiere in October. Yeah, so after the premiere on October 14th, um, we will be getting those, um, and I don't honestly know if it's coming by CD, USB, like, I, I don't know how it's being distributed yet. Um, but when we have that information, it will be pushed out to the states so that way they have access to that, that way they can continue to host their viewing events that they want to have. Again, the purpose of, of this um, documentary is really for us to be able to push it out to the general public, for the public to see. It's a great um, documentary for us to see it. You know, we connect with it, but really we want to make sure the general public sees it. So there will be that continued push to figure out ways that we can help um, highlight this and showcase this uh, at the local level there for your community. So that way they can see kind of what it's like in the emergency department settings. Uh, we have a question, Mike, about EN21. Would you like to share where that, uh, where that will be? Yeah, so EN21 is scheduled to be in Orlando. So going back to Orlando. 
All right. Um, do you have a question uh, relating to General Assembly? If there's going to be a limited number in terms of delegates, um, and a question about the, the number of days. So it is uh, tied to uh, September 8th as a one day. But uh, if you want to, uh, I know there's probably many questions about the number of delegates and things like that. So you want to address that, Mike, briefly? Yeah, so the number of, uh, number of delegates is going to be the same. So, right, so we're still going to operate under our, our bylaws for that. Um, again, this is something that we're working closely with our lawyers and our parliamentarian on and how to set up this process. So there'll be more information that will be coming out to the state presidents um, and state captains around this um, with them. So what we do know is that right now, a lot of the states are, are actually already pulling their delegations, right, because we need that delegate count in. Um, as far as the, the who's going to be your delegates and stuff. We've already heard that a lot of states are, are actually struggling right now because people did not want to be able to come to Vegas. So hopefully by doing this as a virtual event, um, this will help you guys out on the state levels to make sure that you have that delegate count that um, you get. A um, uh, couple of qu uh, questions uh, relating to the election, Mike. Uh, any changes to the timing or, or the election process this year? Now, so the election um, process, as far as timing and everything, that's still going to stay the same um, as what uh, it's currently outlined. And, um, you know, uh, the question was whether uh, Vegas is being looked at uh, again for the future. I don't know that that's, uh, that's been settled at this point. I don't, I don't know if you have anything on that, Mike. I, I'm, I don't know. Um, I would have to uh, take that back to, my, to the meetings team um, to find out uh, for that. But... I can tell you, I mean, Vegas is, is definitely a hot spot area for, for conferences. So um, obviously as we plan out places to, to uh, do our conference, um, obviously Vegas is on the list because it has the capabilities to host us. Um, I just don't know of any dates essentially planned for Vegas at this time. And I believe I just sent you an update on that. So breaking news, Mike. Breaking news. So I guess 2024 is, um, so 2024, we're, we're going to be in Vegas. So, uh, so yes. A uh, couple more minutes, a couple other questions uh, relating to the GA, uh, whether this is uh, just going to be a business meeting and whether there will be resolutions or not. So that's that part of the conversation. Yeah, so that information that we're, we're still looking at all that and, and trying to figure out um, the best way to be able to process all this. So we would love to be able to have kind of our, our GA that we, um, and the platforms that we're looking at and exploring to be able to do that would still allow for that um, same process to have resolutions and things presented to us and, and debate kind of things. There would be some changes in the um, standing rules um, that we typically operate under, um, but that information again will be coming out um, to you all. All right, we're going to see if there's a, a couple last second questions here. Yeah, so I see the question about the um, event calendars for conferences for the next two to five years. So let me address this one because I know this is uh, definitely something that a lot of us have questions about and concerns about. So the problem it is, is if we post out um, where our conferences are, there's a lot of poachers that actually come in and actually interfere with us trying to do those conferences there. And so it actually helps drives up the cost um, of those conferences. So we have to be very careful of when we actually post out um, the information of where our conferences are and those dates. Um, trust me, I, I, I want the, that information out there as well. Um, but unfortunately, because of technology these days um, and the environment is that uh, we have people that um, poach upon our conference. Um, and so what we wanna do is we have to be extremely mindful of that. And we don't want those, those poachers to help drive up the cost um, that uh, would impact us. So we'll go with two more questions here. Uh, Mike, there's a question as to whether EN20X has any limitations on the number of attendees. No, so this is the great thing about the platform that we're moving to, um, and I don't remember, like, it's like hundreds of thousands of people or something they can host, right? So essentially there is no limit. So, you know, so my plan was to have over 5,000 members, right? present for Vegas to be able to do this education and celebration. So, so my challenge now is how do we make this 10,000 members, right? We have 50,000 ENA members. So how can we make this where almost all of our members are getting this educational offering for us? So my challenge to all of you is to help go spread out this word, you know, and recruit five, 10 of your friends. Um, if they're not members, have them join and uh, 
participate in EN20X because it's going to be amazing. So Mike, the last question we'll, we'll go with here and back to GA again is whether there'll be some uh, online delegate education component uh, moving through this process. Yeah, definitely. I mean, as we move forward kind of with the, um, the new platform and going, we'll have to make sure that you guys have that education. So just like we do every year um, with the delegate um, education, we'll push that education out to you as well as to make sure that you have the tools and resources um, to make it successful. <clears throat> and so obviously, you know, looking at the time, an hour has already gone by. So again, I just want to say, you know, thank you for everything that you do for us, your, in your communities. And when I say us, it's really is our, is our profession. So, you know, again, thank you for spending an hour with me and your ENA, ENA peers. Just remember, ENA is here together. So hash, hash sign ENA together isn't just about a hashtag. It is truly a feeling and, it's, and that's shared by me, the whole board and the ENA staff and many of our members. So please stay strong, stay healthy, take care of yourself and know that ENA is here to help support you. And again, thank you for everything that you do. And I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care. Everybody.